Hey guys, I'm Tim Gore. I'm at Createx Colors. What we're going to do is go over how to paint a latex mask. What I'm doing here is applying some of my adhesion promoter, Tim Gore's Bloodline Adhesion Promoter. This will put a nice tack primer surface on this latex mask that will really grab hold of those Bloodline paints that we're going to use next to complete this paint job. All right, see you in a minute when this dries. All right, now that we've sprayed the adhesion promoter on there a few minutes ago and gave it enough time to get ready and prep, this is going to give us a nice grippy surface to paint with our bloodlines. Now I'm going to start out with a nice uh, dermatitis tan. Now you'll notice this tan is very similar to the base coat, if not real similar to the base color of the natural latex. The reason you sometimes don't want to just dive right onto the natural color is uh, occasionally you'll have patches with uh, Cabocil or whatever that'll have a, di a different color than the natural latex. So we're going to make a universal base tone over the whole thing and start from there. So we're going to shake up our paint a little bit. Gonna go right in a little bit. You don't ever really have to fill up your, your, your paint cup to the brim because you, if you need more paint it's easier to add it than waste it and throw it all out. Okay. And another tip seal these up. Sounds silly, but you'll, you might spill it on your, on your model. And then you're, you know, if your boss is on your ass, like mine always is, then you're in deep shit. Pardon me. You're in deep trouble. All right. A little test spray. Don't spray on your tables, people. Don't spray on the equipment. There's, just grab a little piece of paper. Try it on there. Uh, you know, I work in shops and there's spray samples everywhere. It bugs me. All right, there's no reason for it. All right, put paint on here or paint on a, on a sample pad. That's where you put it. All right, so we just shoot a, shoot a little light tone. You don't need to just go in full Monty and blast this on like a, like a cannonball all over this. Just kind of dust this on, get a nice light coat even. And you're still gonna have some spots where you can see it's, it's it needs more, but we're just going to lay down and even, just kind of work this thing. Kind of circular. You can, you know, if you, if you go stripes, you're going to end up with a lot of those little missed holidays. And, and if you go in circles with something like this organic model-y paint job, if there is a couple thin spots, it might actually aid in your uh, naturalistic look. It'll give you some of that natural modeling you'd have in your skin. So we come along. Get a nice coat. I'm going to have to turn this away from you so I don't miss too many. And see, so you don't need a turbocharged uh, hurricane air level either. Just a nice, gentle. What do I got? I got about 20 pounds. You can maybe burst it up. I would go. I wouldn't go any higher than about 23, 25, under 25. You know, I rarely. <clears throat> especially since it's rubber, it's not really absorbing into it. It's not soaking into a porous surface. So you could get some uh, spider webbing and, and drippage. So, and you don't want to do like I'm doing right now. I'm just trying to turn this, but you want to be careful that you're not gumming up the, the tacky surface with dirt off your hands. So we're going to continue and just base coat this a little bit. And we'll get this started. And then uh, I'll finish this up and we'll be back in about, who knows, it won't take me long, we'll finish this and I'll see you with the next color. All right, bye. All right, we're back. I got the nice base coat, nice fairly even base coat of the dermatitis tan on here. What I'm gonna do next is uh, we're gonna do a spatter finish, a spatter uh, pass with uh, the old bone white. But what I've done is I've taken some 4011 reducer and I've done about 60, 40, 50, 50 mix. I want it pretty sheer. I want it very translucent, even further than they already are, okay? And to get a, to get a uh, spatter finish, you put a, your paint in and you drop that pressure way down. I mean, I'm shooting at about mm, eight pounds and it really produces a, a very speckly technique. But we don't want just to make it look like granite, but we want it to bleed a little bit. That's why I have so much reducer in there. 
and this will make it just kind of bleed out. So what we're going to do is just drop down a little, little rain spatter on here. And it is getting a little speckly, so we'll take one little section here, because we don't want to overload it with the uh, reducer too, too far. We want to keep some uh, quality to the paint, but we'll just sponge knock some of this down a little bit. All right. Yeah. Let's knock some of the puddle, the big drops down a little bit. All right. And you want to work in sections so you can get to them before they're dried and stuck into the paint job. All right. This is just going to break up that surface even further. Or uh, it'll begin to break up the, the, the surface. All right. So we're like that. Let's get over to this other side. We turn this away for a second. Put a little more speckling. So what I want to do is break it up, but I want some of that pale breakup going on with, you know, this is Old Man Creepy, and this is beautifully sculpted by Norman Cabrera. Uh, a very, very multi-talented artist out of uh, L.A., as it were, Hollywood. He's worked on many movies and monsters that you probably have heard of. All right. So we continue to knock some of the spattering down. Whoop. Turn it away from you, but we'll turn it back quickly. All right, now he's kind of got a little of that gray old guy hanging around the graveyard. Look, he doesn't see much daylight since he's out robbing graves at night, you know. All right, all right, it's probably got some. Cool stuff going on. All right. Get a few fingerprints on top. Don't, don't worry. Come back and sponge them out. And we're going to put some liver spots and junk on them too, so don't worry. Yeah, got to be careful handling this this when it's uh, tacky like this. Turntables help sometimes when you got, you can spin it without touching it. All right, all right, we'll let that go. But, oh, one thing I wanted to mention uh, with the adhesion promoter, as you remember, we sprayed it on, but you can sponge it on. Um, but you can also uh, add a little bit of your uh, Envision base color to the adhesion promoter and uh, give it a, a little tint. And uh, then you, you, you're, you know, a little, then, you're, then your uh, adhesion promoters Got a little of the flavor of the paint job worked right into it. You don't want to go too far with the with the coloring in it and take away too much of the uh, tenacious adhesion properties, though. Okay, so we're ready for our next color, and we'll be right back. Okay, now that we got the uh, old old uh, old bone white spattered on here and, and dried up a little bit, we're going to go through the next run of colors. We're going to go through some blue, green, and some surgery sienna. And one thing I want to bring up with your blue and your and your sienna is your blues and your oranges, at least with uh, some of your skin tones and stuff like that, can really either make it or break it, depending how delicate these you put these on. This blue, if you put too much on, will it'll just kill that paint job. It'll make it go really gray, and then the orange will make it go really orange and hot. But they are color correctors to each other because they're opposites you know, on the color wheel. So we're going to go with a little bit. We're going to make a very watery mix. And that's going to be a little water. I like very watery paints for this, this technique. I'm, what I'm doing is laying down a spatter. We're going to use a brush this time, chip brush, and just spatter it. And hopefully we're going to lay out like coffee stains, little water stains all over this that are very random and broken up rather than like a hard uh, granite finish where you get a speckle, more of a speckle. This is going to be more of a stainy, splotchy blend. You know, these colors will 
layer and, and two colors make three colors and that could make four colors and blah, blah, blah. That's te technical talk. <laughs> okay, so we got a little water in here. What we're gonna do is add a little couple drops of the 4013. This is uh, like a reduced alcohol, water and alcohol. We're gonna put a little of that in and what that'll help with the uh, surface beating up where you won't have that much beating of the, uh, and let's drop a little more, 4011 for flavor. Okay, we're just gonna put a, just a dash of this in here and look, oh, there's one ready to go. <laughs> All right, but let me show you how much I put actually. I mean, like literally, see how powerful that, that pigment is in these. That's the, another uh, plus because they're very richly tinted, pigmented, so you can really stretch these out a long way, especially if you paint like I am. Uh, very non-committal, little, less is more because you can always put more on. So dip your brush in here. We don't want it all going everywhere, so we just kind of get a little on here. And we're just gonna, and you might not even be able to see it. I'm just gonna put real watery, let's want it more watery. <clears throat> let's put a little more alcohol in here. Or the 4013, pardon me. A lot more, I guess. Really just want that, just, we don't want it to drip though, so that's the hard part. So you gotta do small sections at a time. And if you do get a drip, don't freak out, but you wanna get it off sooner than later. And this will dry down. So we're just getting a little bits on there. And what all this is under underpainting. This is gonna show through later. Probably won't go back to any whites, but later we could go back with a little more blue or, or any of the other colors if we wanna punch that tone up later. But with the old bone white, we probably won't go back to that. So we're just gonna come in with some blue splotches. Watch out, you can, I got a couple dragged out ones. You know, watch that. And you don't want to rub it. So we're just gonna. See, I'm barely using any paint. So that's far too much paint for what we're doing. But I was, forget the backs of the ears and the bottom of the chins. I'll leave holidays there. All right. There used to be a painter I worked with and uh, anything he could reach with the paint he would paint, but if it was underneath it, he would never do it. And of course, what they want to shoot on the, on the film or the show is that part he didn't paint, so. All right. As you can see, these uh, bloodlines and, and lifelines, you don't need an airbrush to apply them. There's many other ways, sponges, brushes, Q-tips, I don't know. Fingers, probably not fingers. All right. Fairly even coverage around this guy. And there will be areas of higher concentration of blues and greens, maybe in the temples and in the eye sockets a little bit, especially on this guy, gravedigger or more, uh, uh, you know, funeral director or whatever it was. He's creepy, Uncle Creepy. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with the vile green. Okay guys, I got up on this side so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. We're gonna come in now with the uh, vile green. We've used about the same mixtures. The ones you wanna be, reminder, is the blue, 
and anything in the orange world, th those are the two colors we want to always be cautious with. And I uh, maybe went a little heavy with the blue, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Green's very uh, uh, forgiving, let's see. So we go back to the same thing. And this is going to be even harder to see because it's green. But we'll get some paint on here. Again, we're looking just for that real naturalistic splotch, not versus like a pebbly splotch, splotch when you're making like a stone finish. Although at this point it might look a little stony because it's still kind of cool. Yeah, it's going to look very blue and green at this point, but I'll show you what we're going to do to not really fix it up. They all work together. I mean, skin's not one color. Maybe it starts one color in a paint job, but this is a very layery technique. So you can see how we're putting this on, very watery, just with the chip brush. I haven't changed brushes, I wipe it off, but I, you know, if they mix, they're gonna mix on the, on the surface of this anyways. So let me go ahead and finish this up and we'll come back to the next color, all right? Be back. Hey guys, we're back. I got the vial green on there, or light mix. And it's nice and dry. Got it dry with, uh, you can use some uh, air, air flow. Stay away from the heat. Just a nice gentle flow of air will uh, speed up some of the drying time on that. We're ready for the vascular violet. Same watery mix. Now you notice some of these look like they're higher concentrates and they might be higher than the blue because that's our danger color. Out of all of them, that's for me the most dangerous and then the orange of course. But blue's the most least forgiving. So we're gonna come back with some of this vascular violet. Now this mix is very watery. We might even have to pick it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm on, I really like going on real watery and just let it build. But let's, that way if you do go a little heavy, it's not gonna ruin everything. All right, it won't be the eyesore. And you also wanna spatter in the direction that you're going on to so you don't get those long, <coughs> long uh, trails. And get his neck nice and good, old man neck. Boom, boom, boom. And I know he looks a little cool right now, cool tone, because of the blues and the greens and the old bone white. But the purple and the greens start browning a little bit where they overlap. So this color is a little quicker. As you get used to doing these, you'll see, you'll be able to burn through these pretty, pretty quickly once you know the, the colors. Oops, got a little, a little crazy over there. Let's get our paper towel. And just, if you're gonna use a Q-tip, just be very gentle with the Q-tips. And you just wanna kinda wick the paint off because it's so watery, you can just kinda touch it with the corner of a paper towel and it'll, it'll wick that sucker right off of there. All right, so we're gonna continue with this. is moving quick so we'll stay stay with it We're a little heavy here don't matter that's a good spot if you're gonna go heavy right now weird little crevasse in your temple this bony guy's got a lot of those huh yeah this is a cool character from early 70s kind of spooky comics kids like me used to read his name's uncle creepy let's finish up the back here a lot of times the back of your skull is going to be uh, not so reds and, and alive because it's just a, a, a thin layer of skin over your bone, bony cranium. <clears throat> but it does on this guy because he didn't have much hair or he won't. <clears throat> you can put a lot of liver spots and sun spots on him. Freckles. Don't forget the backs of the ears and under the chin, okay? Mm 
Yep. All right, we're done with that. We'll throw a little air on this and I'll get right back to you with the next color. All right, thanks. Okay, we're back. I had dropped a little bit of fresh air on this thing and uh, we're gonna go in with a bit of yellows now over the, we're, we just finished the violet, the vascular violet. Here's, a, here's an example of how bright these colors can be over a very light base. Over white, you can see the, the vibrancy of them, but they can be, <clears throat> you know, so they're subdued. To, so you can go that direction with them too. Here we're just using them as a spatter wash to build up layers. So we're gonna use this yellow. Woo, that's a little hot, isn't it? <clears throat> Let's take a couple of those off. And I think, see, you gotta know what to do when you screw up, because I do it a lot. And here we did. There we go, you can leave a couple hot spots, but what I think I'm gonna do is add a little bit more of this uh, 4013. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, that's pretty strong. But we'll make it work. All right, here we go. Continue on. Just be a little careful with this one, too. Let's drop a couple little bits of yellow over here. Maybe less. A little less. Not, a, not every color is going to be the same density. Now, we're, we are going to go back over this with some airbrush work, too. So this is... Uh, Kind of a base, this is a base layering, kind of a base start. Let's get back to the interesting front of this thing. We'll go. Watch, watch your long stretch ones. We dab it off so we're not getting big runs either. This is kind of underpainting. Just drop some yellow on them. One thing about cups, these are dram cups, and you can actually pinch them when you gotta pour them, which is great. But some of the salsa cups or the to-go condiment cups, when you go to pinch them, you know, they'll crack open. So paper cups are good. When you stir paint into a paper cup, you wanna make sure it's not a cold cup with a wax lining, because you might inadvertently mix some wax, you know, scrapings into the paint which is not good, so don't do that. Espresso cups you can get at you know, small, Smart and Final or anywhere, the little supply houses. N nice little smaller uh, paper cups that don't have that wax coating, which is good. And they're, they're, they're made for a hot drink, so they, they're real sturdy. Okay. Also these dram cups here, they're graduated, so if you are mixing something with, with a catalyst or something, you can be accurate. And these hold up to different solvents very well. Versus the salsa cups may melt with different things, like lacquer thinners and whatnot. Acetone will burn right through them. Okay, a little yellow on this guy. We're ready to go. You know, I didn't put too much yellow on them, so we're gonna flow right into the next color. Let's go right into this surgery sienna. Now this is that orange. We're not gonna go too crazy, all right? So this one we're gonna, we're gonna mop up a little of this table because you don't want to put your arm in it like I always do. That's how I got all this. You know? <laughs> all right, we'll mop up some of that so you're not dribbling around. <clears throat> all right, so we'll get this. And you see, I'm not too worried about cleaning the brush off because we're, we're wet mixing everything anyways in a sense. So it's not really necessary at this juncture. So we'll come over here, get our mix double dabble again you can already see this orange i've made it very very washy very non-committal so i can just drop it in there and i'm not gonna just obliterate my paint job but i don't know if you can see but <clears throat> it is warming up and that cool tones that were built underneath are uh, are settling down as it were because all the layers are now building on each other all right, bring some of this orange in there. Sienna, it's like a burnt orange. <clears throat> it's, 
And if you're using an airbrush, just that it's a straight mixture, again, you can go from a very sheer bright orange or bright, brighter orange all the way down to like a burnt, really burnt, toasty orange. Don't forget under the chin. <clears throat> All right, now we're cooking. All right, let's drop a couple of sprinkle sprinkles over here. And again, we probably won't go back to the blues unless we're airbrushing them in very specific areas. And even then, I would like to, I like to use them very watery and sort of under the skin esque, shadowy, intrinsic. We want to try to make everything look intrinsic, like skin. It's like layers of different dermis. <laughs> I sound like a doctor or wannabe doctor. All right, We're coming around. Again, when you have this paint reduced so much, you got to go pretty carefully. You wouldn't want to keep hitting the same spot because you'll puddle up and then you'll get these drips that could be detrimental. In this guy's case, <clears throat> it probably only helps. But <clears throat> let's get a couple more layers. <clears throat> Excuse me. On here. <clears throat> 